Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jermaine Morgan and you're watching Jermaine Morgan TV and today I want to talk to you about the six string bass, so stay tuned. Okay, so lately I've been getting a lot of inquiries about the six string bass. People want to know more about this instrument. I guess I have a lot more players now that are on the fence about it, thinking about buying an instrument and they're not sure for whatever reason. And trust me, I've been there where you are for some of you. Some of you, there's no big deal for you, but for others of you who emailed me and sent me your questions concerning the six string bass and making the switch over, it's not as scary as you think it is. I was there. Uh, before I started playing six string bass years ago, I had this big fear that I was going to be in the middle of a song and I was going to forget what string I was on and I was going to ruin the whole song for everybody and it was going to be the end of the world. So I know all the fears associated with this instrument because it feels like you can really get lost in no man's land. And, and for some of you who've seen some of my older lessons, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When I say no man's land, it means up past this 12th fret all the way up through here somewhere, you don't know where you are on the bass because you've jumped strings. So I want to assure you and really kind of put some of you at ease concerning this instrument. It's not as complicated and it's not as difficult as it may sound or it may seem. I know there are some myths that's going on. People think, okay, if you come in with a six string bass, more than likely you're not going to get hired for a gig or people are going to think you are just a solo player, that type of thing. And those are somewhat true in certain areas but for me i i can honestly say that that's never been an issue for me uh concerning work concerning uh studio session work or anything like that i've played this bass on as many studio sessions as i have my four and my five string and no one has ever complained uh the versatility of this particular bass i'm able to take this bass in almost any studio session and get a multiple of tones you know Now this bass in particular is created by Warrior Instruments, a company most of you know I officially uh, endorse as a bass player, but um, there are several instruments and the thing I will say to a lot of you guys who are on the fence about this instrument, all six string basses are not created equal. Now you have some of them, you can look at the size of my neck and my neck can be kind of big for some people, but it's pretty comfortable in my opinion because I mean, it's not too wide where you can't get your hands around it. There are some basses that I have played, and some of you may like that. I actually have big hands, but I don't like a huge neck. And some of you may like that. Uh, and the spacing, all of that may vary. And the thing I would encourage you to do, if you don't have any Luthers uh, close to you, is visit a music store and figure out what budget uh, you are wanting to spend as far as it's concerning a six string bass because you can find a six string bass anywhere from three or four hundred bucks on up depending on what you're getting but the biggest thing is before you buy something offline at least go into your local music store or that type of thing and try them out see what works for you see what's comfortable for you now getting into just the basic meat and potatoes of understanding this bass to take that fear out of it now the basic setup of this bass is um a lot like your four and your five string the only difference is where you have with your four string you have e a e and g and you know if you have a five string bass you have that extra low b string okay now the thing about the bass that makes it almost so simple to understand as opposed to a lot of the other instruments is all the strings are like basically in four so you have and that same thing you have from that G you have C so your high string will be C so again and all that means it sounds a little weird because you're not you if you're not playing a six string bass or you've never played a six string bass that C may sound out of place for you but all that simply means is you have more range it's called an extended range bass and you have more options 
you know, you have way more options to continue your lines up instead of having to go all the way down the neck. You know, so it gives you a lot more options. So different stuff for me that I would normally have to move around for, it's right there available for me, like where I would normally on a four or five string bass have to do something like, I can do it here. So, I mean, the same thing. So you have a lot more options concerning this bass. Now you can do this same stuff on a four string that offers you uh, more than 21 frets. But a lot of the, the note choices that the C string is gonna make available to you, you're gonna run out of options on a four or five string. And you have those extra options once you, um, you know, get here. You know, all that stuff, you're not gonna have as many options available on your five and your, um, your four string, especially once you pass that 12th fret. And it's basically all on you. And I don't want you to I don't want you to think that this instrument is only for solo players because that's not necessarily true. You have uh, options of even playing the bass line. I have uh, a lick in one of my songs that I wrote um, a few years back that I normally would have to play it if I'm on a um, four or five string bass. I have to play the lick here. The song is actually an E flat. I tune flat normally. But I tune standard for you guys, so you won't be confused. But normally, the the song, the, the line starts out. I can do it on the six string easily here. But if I'm on a four or five string, I have to come here. And it's a lot more movement. And it's cool because I know the lick in both places, but having the six string bass makes the job and the workload so much easier for me to just be here. So I'm moving across a total of about five or six frets to get the thing done instead of having to jump down here. And I know there are other options that I can play this particular line, but it just kind of it kind of compacts everything a little bit for me and make life a lot easier if I'm playing a, something really fast. You know what I'm saying? So you have a, a few more options concerning this bass. So hopefully this clears up some of the myths and some of the, the fears for you. And remember, if you want to continue and talk more about this instrument, just click the link below to get this full lesson. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. And listen, if you enjoyed the content, click the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my notifications so you can be notified each week once I post a new video. I really appreciate you guys being here and check it out. If you want more content like this and if you want to get even more in depth on the bass lessons, remember to head over to JermaineMorgan.net. There I have many more bass lessons. I talk a little bit more in depth on some of these subjects that we've covered here on YouTube and I also have music. Most of you don't know, but I am an artist as well. So I do have music available there if you want to hear me really play. <laughs> I have music there, so check it out, and I will see you guys on next week. Thank you. I'm out of here.